Okay, um, I promised to do this video, and I know I've, sorry it's taking so long, but I've just been, had terrible time, and I haven't had the best time to upload the videos with my internet crisis, and I'll call that, it that, but here's the new review of my newest gun, which I got a very long time ago, and should have done this video a while ago, this was my... Uh, maybe a week or so, the week after Christmas, on a Monday, so it's definitely been a while. This gun is the GNG Armament, brand new gun by the way, G2010, or the F2000. This model is not here in the U.S. yet, um, at least to my knowledge, I have not seen one sold in the US, and I'm talking about actual US distributors such as Airsoft GI, you know, or Evike or Trinity Airsoft, one of them. Ex um, Extreme Airsoft, maybe, I don't know. But they have a different supply line. This gun is amazing, uh, except for the sm some small hiccups it has um, with uh, design flaws. But m one of those design flaws is with all two stage trigger guns. Um, so here it is. Here's the box that sh I got it in, um, and I'm glad that they didn't really take too much time on the packaging, which is great. No foam to deal with. It's plastic. We're gonna recycle this bitch. Yeah. Of course, all GNG gun guns come with a 430 round high pass magazine. Only GNG gives the 430 round. Everyone else gives the 300 round. When you get this gun, you get a flash hider here. And by the way, I got the short barreled model, if you have not, cannot already tell. Which is the best model, in my opinion, if you want a really long ass barrel. It already has the same, inner, the same length inner barrel as a M4, why go over? And I got this from Red Wolf Airsoft. Yeah, I've got a, a black cleaning rod. More high quality, but hell, it's a, it's a, it's a cleaning rod, who cares? Um, a coupon code from Red Wolf Airsoft um, so that I can get more stuff there and then wait two weeks for it to come. Uh, a barrel plug or barrel cover. It's red. Um, it's whatever, it's the same damn thing that you get with every other gun. Well, mostly. Okay, here's the um, guide for it and this is the uh, manual. By far one of the best manuals um, for an airsoft gun um, out there, maybe because this is in a cheap China co company. It shows you the two different types. We've got the standard and we've got the hunter, which is what I have. And um, has and here's a great thing: it's all in English. Oh my gosh, this is this is a first for a, this is a first. It's it's crazy. And the and it's pictures and arrows. It gives you everything you need to know. But unfortunately, this entire page is for the standard, and since I didn't have that, I cannot use it. Except for this page. This is the one for the, uh, just these two. This part right here, pretty much. No, that's not it. Where is it? I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Here it is. This page right here. Everything from this page, this entire page, goes for the hunter, which tells you how to adjust the scope. Which is nice because you just twist the little dials to, die, to zero in your scope. And this scope's, by the way, very high quality. Built by GNG, um, one of their better scopes. Unlike their SUSAT, which is the one of the inner lenses, has become I, I don't know. It just it's 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 weird. I'll have to make a review on that after this. And of course, how to break that everything little piece and you know thing that's gone into this gun. Well, every part that is. And uh, that's that's great. Really good manual. Now to get to the, to the gun. As you can see, the gun looks unbelievably awesome. Or for better term, it, this gun is just sexy as hell. I'm sorry. It's true. Um, I love this gun. And I will get a SOCOM style suppressor uh, by Classic Army when I go to my uh, the St. Valentine's Day game on the 19th at Blast Camp. Um, I will hopefully be getting this fixed and return me before then. If not, I'll be very sad because I want to use this gun because it's amazing. Um, everything on the gun is amazing. It is totally worth the $420. I did not pay for it because I had a 10% discount. 
I paid 363 um, without shipping, which was a total of 80 bucks. Um, so uh, this is why I, I, I had the money and for the shipping, and then the rest was totally Christmas present, which was awesome because this gun is amazing. It was totally worth it. Um, you don't get your money. You get your money's worth, definitely. Okay, we're going to start from the back. Um, they do have, you know, trades, a unique serial, serial number for each gun, which I do like that, what they're doing nowadays, instead of printing the same damn one on every single gun, like some China clones do. Basically, there's only, um, this isn't licensed, I believe, by Cybergun for FN2000. Yep, here's the butt plate rubber, but it's, the outside is really sturd, isn't sturdy, it's flimsy, but the inside, this, these pieces right here, you can see, they're very thick. They do not move. When this thing is locked in, you have to pull this. The only way you can do this is if this gets pulled with a lot of force from the bottom. You cannot pull this off from the side at all. It's very sturdy. It works very well. The only fortunate, unfortunate part, it takes forever to get on and to get used to. Here's the back. Of course, new GNG's quick change. Uh, well, that's the adjuster. You can adjust the um, FPS, the, the limit it shoots. So how high it shoots, just by turning that in really in there. And I do believe that is also a quick change spring. Uh, just remove the plates, screws. I believe that's so. It's, it's something new. Um, unlike the JLS FN2000, which is absolutely terrible, um, they give you much more battery space. And I am able to fit in a uh, nunchuck style battery, and that will. It's a 9.6, by the way. Uh, this gun is a larger gun. Uh, it is a full-size gun. It's not like an SMG or anything, so I do recommend using a 9.6 or above. Uh, the nunchucks work very well. Uh, they're made by Intellect. Probably, Intellect probably is by far one of the best battery-making companies out there um, for 9.6s, and um, I suggest you go buy some. The only problem is if you get uh, a defective one, which I got, a defective 1400mm brick type, but it was an old design, so you know, I don't really care. Um, here's the only problem is the sling mounts. The front sling mount is decent, but I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't trust it. The rear sling mounts completely flimsy as hell. Even though this is really good plastic, this is a, a fiber polymer, you know, composite, you know, whatever. It's ABS plastic, but it's very nicely made. It's got a really nice, neat texture on it. It feels high quality, and uh, that's what it is. The only problem is you can see straight through to the gearbox. They have addressed this design flaw and are getting plugs so that you can use this gun in the rain. If you do use this in the gun in the rain now, prepare to buy a whole brand new motor because that's what's there right there. It will get shot and uh, you'll have a pretty pricey bill on the rewiring. And um, so that's the only flaw to this gun. Moving up, we have the hop up, which of course, like all F2000 designs, which means this, there's only like two. Um, it's a flip-up in their M4 style, but it's adjusted, so you cannot replace this hop-up. You can replace the bucking in the barrel. Other than that, no. Um, they probably will come with an MOE out uh, replacement, but other than until then, you're stuck with this, and it's very stiff. So you need to use a uh, screwdriver to get in there. You cannot just use your finger, which I guess this could be a good thing. Sprung loaded, thank God. And, um... Right here we have the magazine well, which is, of course, you can only use G&G mags with this because there is a screw that needs to be in there and you, this part cannot be flat. There has to be a little divot here and they make that on their 79 round mid caps. Other than that, almost zero play, only back and forth play, but it doesn't really matter. Here we go. The uh, release, mag release, very stiff. That's a good thing, though. That means we're not going to be accidentally hitting it and the mag's flying out. Um, moving up to the uh, thumb hole here. Very large, but very comfortable. Um, up to the... Uh, you can see that right there. Right now, this is the trigger, and this is where our last problem comes with. Right now, it's on safe. It's on semi. You pull the trigger. Nothing happens. Hmm. We're going to auto. Nothing happens. Just pull this all the way back. Um, there are two, with two stage triggers like this, 
The AUG is better, more better designed, even on the JGs. When it comes to the F2000, it is a newer design, and the triggers get stuck like this. Um, as well do the P90s, well, Tokimori P90s, but they are um, made better, so you can fix it very easy just by taking the battery out, putting it back in, and then it will re re uh, fix itself a lot easier. This, however, um, I'm going to have to have this sent in because I do not know how to fix this gun. Like I said, it's brand new, and um, that's all I can really do. Um, on the bottom half still, this is the front foregrip. This gun is ambidextrous, thank God. Uh, except for this piece right here, but it doesn't really matter. Since it's completely, um, for looks. Which is the charging handle, if you did not know. Um, you can take this off. And they, I believe they are thinking about putting, making adaption, adap an adapter. Um, well not really, the, the handles could be swapped out. Now, we could have a, they are thinking of three types, I believe, or what they should do. They should have one that can be swapped out for that has a rail, a bottom rail here. Um, the second one, one that has an integrated flashlight, so that you can have an integrated flashlight and an integrated presser switch here. And third, they need to have a grenade launcher, a barrel-mounted grenade launcher, which will come back out past the barrel underneath back here, or at least around here where the trigger is. Somewhat like the um, SCAR model uh, grenade launcher that fits on it, um, that STAR did, or Ares. And I do believe they will be doing something like that, but we will have to wait because it's that's a little bit harder because you have to design everything to fit. And uh, like the SCAR version, it did not fit well on most of the models. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Okay, now to the best part of this gun, or this is what the gun that I bought, which is the scope. And of course, on the top we have the, um, you know, regular iron sights. It they work, but not at close range. The only downside, but the scope is beautiful. They made they went with their own special design. The circle with the three lines come together. Let's see, it is only two and a half times. But it doesn't matter because the field of view, field of view it looks small, but it but once you get past you know 20 feet, it covers a lot, and it's really clear and crisp, so you're not going to miss a lot. As well, what they did this piece right here, which I will do on a takedown review, is just a cover. They went really smart and cost effective. Instead of designing the entire scope around this piece right here and fitting it onto the gun, they made the scope completely different completely separate and they just made a cover and then the scope lined up with the cover holes which are on the front and on the back and even though this this is very rigid this is not this is all plastic all AB is plastic they didn't you know treat the scope cover any different than they did the body which I really like the only downside is they made it lower in order to compensate for the um, scope underneath they made the actual rail lower so you do not have any rear sights or front sights but a lower ABS plastic rail that's much larger than a metal one so finding to put a red dot on this maybe I don't know I will have to try that to see if that works uh, certain China clones that are much a little bit larger will probably wor work um, other than that um, just stick with the scope in here it's, it's really nice and it's small, so you know the chance of this scope getting shot out from that size is very minimal. Um, so yeah. And here's the button right there. You just press that button. You slide this back. It pops off. Uh, forward. You slide this forward. Sorry. And it pops off. I'll I'll do a review on that. And here we have the front sling mount. It's just ABS plastic. Don't trust the slings. This gun is this gun is very balanced, so there's no reason you should have a sling. Here we come to our first aesthetic. It's the uh, ejection port. Not ejection port. What am I talking about? No, this is the uh, obviously the rather large but high build, high quality build um, uh, cocking handle, charging handle, whatever you want to call it. You pull it back and it locks. That's really nice. You can slide it forward and it does make a nice sound. It does have a good spring, but don't do it too many times. You might break it. I don't know. That was a big problem with the uh, MP5s, but this is an MP5. Um, the fake ejection port. Uh, this is a 
um, metal, just basically aluminum piece here. It's stuck in there, but I do believe this is meant to uh, fly out, but I'm not going to try doing it or anything. Yes, you can. There you go. I just figured this out. This is the ejection port right there, uh, or where it would be. And you can just basically... Oh, that's really, that's really cool. You can secure it, but if you want it out, you just push this full forward and then pull it down, and you have the ejection port there. But basically, behind the gun, you could stack five shells in this little tube here before they before the, the sixth one would knock the, the end to the ended shell that would be here out. And uh, I know I talked a little fast. So basically, five shells, empty shells, could stack in the tube before being knocked out. And uh, that's what's really cool about this gun because you don't have shells going everywhere. And, um, you know, everyone thought, oh, it comes down the bottom, like the P90. No, it doesn't. It stacks up at the front. And then when you're done, you can just easily push them out with a, a flush t t tool. I, I don't know. I don't know one of these guns, so I can't tell you. And here's the uh, gas tube adjustment. And you can move this left and right, but uh, I stuck it in this position because it looks better. It was out off to the side over here. And um, you can move that, but I wouldn't really mess with it. And now we come to the outer barrel, which is very short. It's only two inches of the actually exposed outer barrel. And the inner barrel goes from the end of the flash lighter all the way back to about here, I believe. Actually, right here. And uh, that's about the same size as a M4A1. Um, and that's very nice. So basically, you could use a, this is a full-sized gun, and you're not sacrificing range on the inner barrel and velocity to uh, a bullpup designed gun, or a shorter gun than an M4. And this is about the same size as an M4, but um, if you get the longer version, the standard, it's about the same size as a M16A4, and it's shorter. So, you know, there you go. And of course, the flash hider, which is all steel, as you can tell. Very nice. But I'm going to be getting a suppressor to make it look even better. So, I got this gun at Red Wolf Airsoft for $410. Um, please rate and subscribe, and don't forget about your comments. I enjoy those, reading, and um, thank you.